you can start filming whenever. I'm already filming you. Oh, we're already filming. <laughs> it was too cute. All right, everyone. This is the Hank and Rupert update. I don't know how these dogs haven't been adopted. It's probably because of their proximity to me. Um, but they need to be adopted. So I wanted to take some time to share with you about their lives, each Hank and Rupert, and a little bit about dog rescue, where I'm at mentally, and what things have been like for the last couple of weeks, couple of months. Um, first off, we have Hank here, and Hank is a four or five year old pit bull from the Mojave shelter. Hank has helped out at our prison program. He's been in and out and just helping. Um, we like to have as many inmates have dogs to handle as possible. And Hank has been really, really helpful. His issue was insecurity. He was an insecure dog and he's, um, you know, so not very trustworthy. Anytime you have something in your hands, quick movements, he, uh, you know, just insecure. It's like an insecure human being. But he's getting much better and he's, uh, he's very dog friendly. He didn't know how to be around. He had, hadn't really met other dogs, I don't think, uh, in the beginning, but now he's perfect. He, he loves my girl's little dogs. He gets along with the big dogs. Um, he's non-confrontational and he's just really great. And then we have Rupert. And Rupert is about a 95 pound. He's some kind of Great Dane pit bull mix. Rupert's very mellow. He likes to chill out. Um, he'll go for hikes, he'll go run. He'll do <laughs> really anything you do. Um, he just wants to be with his human. He's a perfectly loyal, I mean, this is a man's dog. Uh, he would bond with a female too, but he loves going with his human, being with his human. Uh, both of these dogs sleep with me. Uh, Rupert sleeps not in a kennel, right next to the bed, does not make a sound all night long, sleeps through the night, is perfectly, perfectly well behaved. Comes when he's called, you can have him off leash anywhere. Uh, Hank, similarly, is crate trained. He sleeps in the room, doesn't make a peep, sleeps through the night. Uh, is a really, really, really good boy. I don't have him off leash very often, but uh, we've done it before. And uh, yeah, so they both need to be adopted. They're both really good. Um, neither of these dogs have a bad bone in their body. Rupert does not react to any of the other dogs we have here. Blue, Maggie, um, Lala, any of the other dogs that we've had at this house, house Nacho either, very good with them. Um, but we did have, yesterday was, a, was an interesting day because um, you don't get that food, buddy. You don't get it. <laughs> yesterday was an interesting day because um, we, had, we were at the penitentiary and we had one of the coolest experiences, uh, you know, one of the best experiences of our life, of my life as far as being able to, to so freely give somebody um, a gift that you know, was very effortless for us and really filled us up with a lot of hope and a lot of happiness. And it was really cool to have Sam and Kim and, and Leah and, and Lisa around for it, but we were on our way outside the penitentiary and, and just as we were leaving, we brought in 10 dogs with us, other than the 10 dogs that are already there. We would brought in 10 additional dogs, so we were walking out with this mob of dogs, and we could hear this inmate kind of, kind of uh, excitedly mumble, like, I haven't pet a dog in 12 years. Um, and he was kind of like trying to reach out but unable to. You know, he really wanted to ask, can I pet those dogs? But he didn't want to be inappropriate, and there's rules to follow, and you can't, you know. And uh, so we kind of all looked at each other, immediately backed up, and just kind of swarmed this dude. He had a broken arm. So who knows what he's been through inside the penitentiary. He obviously got it in prison. Who knows how it happened. But his name was Deshaun, and... Um, and he just got to loving on Sonar and loving on all the dogs and it was just spectacular. It was really neat to be able to give that to him. And then I filled him in on how he can contact his counselor to get him enrolled in the program for next year. So he committed to being a part of our positive change program next year, which is really special. I got home and literally I was posting about that. Uh, this was later on in the evening. You know, I was literally on my phone posting about that wonderful experience, still on a high and, um, and bam, something came into the yard like a chipmunk or something. And the dogs reacted, you know, after it. They all got this, it went from calm energy. They're all off leash together. All the dogs hang out off leash. And, and they went from a calm, submissive state of mind to an excited, you know, prey drive instinct. And when they, a lot of dogs, especially when there's a Rupert and a Baloo next to each other, when they get that heightened, uh, that heightened frequency of, of, uh, of kind of prey drive, they, they can turn on each other. And that's exactly what happened is, as soon as Rupert went after the chipmunk, Baloo went after Rupert, 
and um, and then they all converged on Rupert. And it was just a helpless experience, you know, to be to be here by myself and pulling a you know 140 pound mastiff by the legs off of Rupert, who I'm desperately trying to help, and watching him get hurt, you know. And um, of course, you don't get to go on the couch. The other dogs, you know, are all they their their instincts just kick in and. You know they are all target targeting Rupert, and it's very difficult to get all those dogs separated. And then, you know, I just felt like you know, I was looking up at Rupert. You know, afterwards I finally got them all separated and and um, got Maggie and Hank and Rupert back together so that they could get back to a calm state of mind. But he's eating. <laughs> You're not supposed to be eating. That's Rupert's food. Um, and what happened? You know, and then I had to to. I was running out of daylight, so I had to bathe them all. They were all covered in blood and, and dirty, and you know Rupert has has cuts all over his legs and and um, on his face, and you know Hank has a couple on his snout and on his back legs and one on his ear. So having to bathe all the dogs, you know each of them individually, and and render care, render veterinary care, um, in particular to Rupert and to Baloo and and Hank. It's just, it's overwhelming, you know, it really can be an emotionally uh, disturbing experience to kind of feel like you've, uh, you've let your kids down, you know, because I, I love Rupert, I care about this dog very much, and, you know, I, I, I got us to, a, I got us to a point where he was in jeopardy, you know, and he was hurt. So to feel responsible for that, you know, really makes you feel shitty. And I, I want to be there for him. I want to have. I want to be there for all the dogs. I want to try and, and help rehabilitate them. I want them all to be off leash together and and working towards you know symbiotic harmonious existence. But these things happen. And behind the scenes in dog rescue, it's a lot more difficult than people, I think, understand. I think it's just a lot of hanging out with dogs and and uh, rescuing, which it is. But you know, this is a 24 hour, seven day a week kind of relentless occupation that uh, you never know what's going to happen and. Uh, it can get you down, you know. There are times where I wonder if I'm, if I can do this, you know, if I'm, if this suits me, if I can deal with the emotional turmoil of, of um, all that goes on in rescue, whether it's the things that you see that people do to dogs, whether it's the things you see dogs do to each other, whether it's uh, dogs not getting adopted or dogs getting adopted and the emotional, you know, giving away something that you care about very much. Um, there's just a, it's a topsy turvy emotional experience. It's a real roller coaster, and for a person who's not all that emotionally balanced to begin with, uh, it can be tough, you know. But I was reminded today when I got back from from Kern Valley Penitentiary, we're we're trying to expand our program out there, and I saw Rupert, and I, you know I've really been tossing around a lot of things in my mind, just being worried about about this, about life, and about this, and and doing this work, having this many dogs in rehabilitation around me, and and whether or not I'm cut out for it. And Rupert got up real gingerly when I got home. He was real excited to see me, you know, slow wag because his ass hurts and his legs hurt. But, you know, he got up and he and we're spending time together. He's not mad at Hank. Hank's not mad at Rupert. They're doing just fine. You can see they're calm. There's food involved. You know, everybody's just chilling. And he kind of reminded me, like, we take our thumps, Dad. You know, shit happens. We take our thumps. And, uh, and tomorrow's a new day. And no need to cry over what you, you know, what you haven't done. You know, I, I only shared this with like two other people. Amy was one of them and, and Amy gave me some really good advice. I hope she's watching. Um, but I felt really, really down. I felt awful with yesterday. I just felt so helpless and so, you know, just like such a shitty human being for having put my dogs in this position. And, uh. Yeah, to come home and see, you know, I talked to Lisa and Leah today a little bit, and then to come see Rupert, you know, kind of just like, hey, Dad, turn the page, fuck it, you know. It's all good. These things happen. Um, it's how you respond to adversity. Um, it's how you, you react to these situations and persevere, you know, not necessarily those moments themselves, but how you react to them. So, um, you know, I feel renewed, and I feel like... Um, we're on the right track. I obviously <laughs> look at this little turd just army crawling into the food just to get that one little pebble. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? You're not allowed. That's not allowed. 
So I just feel, um, I feel pretty good. You know, I feel better. I know this is like a cru crucially, just painfully long video, but um, just wanted to share that. I, I think it feels better to share some of these things when they're going on than, than uh, keep them bottled up. And uh, Amy, thanks for sharing with me about how you're feeling. And uh, yeah, you know, we, um, we all go through this kind of shit in our lives and it can feel like the end of the world at some point. I mean, I, I didn't want to get up today. I didn't want to face the day today. I was real down on myself. And um, it's great to get back on the horse and, and, um, and just have another crack at it. And I feel good. So thank you guys for listening. And uh, we're going to keep on keeping on and keep on doing what we do. I hope you guys keep supporting us and following us and, um, and uh, putting up with these very long posts. <laughs> but thank you again. And uh, we'll check in soon. Over now. He wins. He won. He wins. He got the food. I'm a terrible dad. <laughs> what are you doing? You're an amazing dad.